So what do we do? We are going to sum over final states the probability to go from i to final at time t naught to first order. Since this sum over final states uh, is really a continuum, this is represented by the integral of the f i t naught 1 multiplied by the number of states at every little interval. So this will go rho of e f DEF. So this is what we developed about the number of states. So I'm replacing this. I, I have to sum, but I basically decide to call this little dn, the little number of states in here. And then I'm going to integrate this probability to the number of states over there. And therefore, the dn is replaced by rho times def. So then, this whole transition probability will be 4 integral. I'm writing now the integral. Vfi squared sine squared omega fi t naught over 2 ef minus ei squared rho of e f, d of e f. And you would say at this moment, OK, this is as far as you go. So that must be Fermi's golden rule. Because we don't know rho of e f is different in different cases. So we have to do that integral, and we'll get our answer. But the great thing about this golden rule is that you can go far and you can do the integral. Now, I don't even know. This VFI also depends on the energy. How am I ever going to do the integral? That seems outrageous. Well, uh, let's try to do it. And uh, part of the idea will be that uh, we're going to be led to the concept that we already emphasized here because of this suppression that only a narrow band of states contribute. And in that narrow band, if the narrow band is narrow enough, in that region, VFI will be approximately constant in a narrow enough region. And rho will be approximately constant. So we'll take them out of the integral do the rest of the integral, and see later whether the way we're doing the integral shows that this idea is justified. So I'll just, you know, sometimes you have to do these things of uh, making the next step. So I'll do that. I'll take these things out, assuming they're constant enough. And then we'll get 4. VFI squared rho of E, what should I put here? E sub I, is that right? Because if it's all evaluated at the initial energy EI, if only a narrow band will contribute. I'll put an H squared here so that this will become uh, omega FI. And now I will integrate over the, some range of, inter, of energies the function sine squared omega fi t naught over 2 over omega fi squared def. So I just took the thing out of the integral, and we're going to hope for some luck here. Whenever you have an integral like that, it probably is a good idea to plot what you're integrating and think about it and see if you're going to get whatever you wanted. Look, uh, I don't know how far I'm going to integrate. 
I probably don't want to integrate too far because then these functions that I took out of the integral are not constants. So let's see what this uh, looks like, the integrand, um, this function here. Well, sine squared of x over x squared goes to 1. You know, when t uh, this we're plotting as a function of omega fi. Why? Uh, time is not uh, really what we're plotting into these things. We're plotting, we're integrating over energy, ef. And omega fi is ef minus ei. So omega is the variable you should be plotting. And when omega goes to zero, this whole integral goes like t naught squared over four. And then sine squared of x over x squared does this thing. And the first step here is two pi over t naught, two pi over t naught, and so on. And now, you smile. Why? <laughs> because it's looking good, this thing. First, what's going to be this area? Well, if I look at this lobe, roughly, I would say, high t0 squared with 1 over t0, answer, proportional to t0. This whole integral is going to be proportional to t0. The magic of the combination of the x squared growth, t naught squared, and the oscillation is making into this integral being linear in t naught, which is the probability that transition happens is going to grow linearly, is going to be a rate as we expected. So this is looking very good. Then uh, we can attempt to see that also most of the contribution here happens uh, within this range to the integral. If you look at the integral of sine squared x over x squared, 90% of the integral comes from here. By the time you have this ones, you're up to 95% of the integral. Most of the integral comes within those lobes. And look what I'm going to say. I'm going to say, look, I'm going to try to wait long enough. T naught is going to be long enough so that this narrow thing is going to be narrower and narrower. And therefore, most of the integral is going to come from omega fi equal to 0, which means ef equals to ei. If I wait long enough with t naught, this is very narrow. And even all the other extra bumps are already 4 pi over t naught over here is just going to do it. Um, without any problem. It's going to fit in. So another way of thinking of this is to say, look, um, you could have argued that this is going to be linear in t naught if you just change variables here, absorb the t naught into the energy, change variable, and the t naught will go out of the integral in some way. and uh, but that is only true if the limits go from minus infinity to plus infinity. So I cannot really integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity in the final energies, but I don't need to because most of the integral comes from this big lobe here. And if t naught is sufficiently large, it is really within no energy with respect to the energy EI. 
So our next step is to simply declare that a good approximation to this integral is to integrate the whole thing from minus infinity to infinity. So let me um, say this. Um, suppose here in this range, omega fi is in between 2 pi over t naught and minus 2 pi over t naught. What does this tell us, that omega fi is in this region? Well, this is EF minus EI over H bar. So this actually tells you EF is in between EI plus 2 pi H bar over T naught and EI minus 2 pi H bar over T naught. All right, so um, this is the energy range. And as T naught becomes larger and larger, the window for EF is smaller and smaller. And we have energy conserving. So let's look at our integral again. The integral is I. That's for the integral, this whole thing will be equal to integral DEF sine squared of omega fi t naught over 2 over omega fi squared. So what do we do? We call this a variable u equal omega fi t naught over 2. So that du is DEF t naught over 2 h bar. Because omega fi is EF minus EI, and EF is your variable of integration. So you must substitute the DEF here and uh, the rest of the integrand. So what do we get? from the DEF and the other part, you get at the end h bar t naught over 2 integral from, well, let's leave it, sine squared u over u squared du. Um, so look at this. The omega fi squared, uh, by the time you get here, Omega fi goes like 1 over time. So when it's down here, we'll give you a time squared. But the de gives you a 1 over time. So at the end of the day, we get the desired linear dependence on t naught here. Only if the integral doesn't have t naught in here, and it will not have it if you extend it from minus infinity to infinity. And there's no error, really, in extending it from minus infinity to infinity, because you basically know that n lobes are going to fit here and are going to be accurate, because there's little energy change if t naught is large enough. If t naught is large enough even at 20 pi h bar and at 20 pi h bar here, that still will, will do it. So we integrate like that, we extend it, and we get a, this whole integral has value pi. So we get h bar t naught pi over 2. That's our integral i. So our transition probability. What is it? We have it there. Over there, we'll have it the sum over final states i to f of t naught first order is equal to the integral times this quantity. So the, that quantity is h t naught pi over 2. 
So it's four, what do we have? VFI squared rho of EI over H squared, then H bar T dot pi over two. So your final answer for this thing is two pi over H bar VFI squared rho of EI T naught. So let's box this. This is a very nice result. It's almost Fermi's golden rule by now. Let's put a time t here. T naught, this was a label not to confuse our time integrals or things like that. So we could put a time t here is 2 pi over h bar vfi squared rho of ei t. OK. Um. From here, we have a transition rate. So a transition rate is probability of transition per unit time. So a transition rate would be defined as the probability of transition after a time t divided by the time t that has elapsed and happily this has worked out so that our transition rate, W, is 2 pi over h bar VFI squared rho of EI. And this is Fermi's golden rule. A formula for the transition rate to the continuum of final states. You see, when I see a formula like that, or when you will see it, it almost seems like you still have to integrate. There's a rho of E, and let's integrate over final But the integral has been done, and it says transition amplitude squared evaluated at the state initial and final with the same energy, the final state, and the rho evaluated at the energy of the initial state. You don't have to do more with that. So uh, we have this formula. Let's look at a couple more things. Do units work out? Yes. Uh, this is transition per unit. This is 1 over time. This is energy squared. This is 1 over energy. And this is an h bar. This will give you 1 over time. So the, this thing goes well. How about our assumptions? Uh, this was calculated using some time t. We used to call it t naught. How large does it have to be? Well, the larger it is, the more accurate the integral is. So, uh, but you don't want to take it too large either, because the larger it is, uh, the transition probability eventually goes wrong at first order of perturbation theory. So the, this argument is valid if there is a time t naught that is large enough so that within these error bars, rho and the transition matrix element are constant, so that your integral is valid. But this t naught being large enough should be small enough that the transition probability doesn't become anywhere near 1. That will happen in general or if VFI is sufficiently small. So when VFI is sufficiently small, this will always uh, hold. And in physical applications, this happens and it's OK. So that's our presentation and derivation of Fermi's golden rule. And we will turn now to one application that we will discuss.